everybody, welcome back to the 3D Print Diorama Animals series. Next up on the list is an elephant. This is going to be quite a big print, so let's see what we can find. Elephant. Alright, we got quite a few choices here. That one's pretty cute. It's a Veroni style. This one seems to make the most sense. I mean, it looks like a real animal and it is printed upside down, which is interesting. You don't have all that support structure. You just have a little bit on the bottom here. Let's take a look at it. Oh, that doesn't work. I like it. Let's download it. That looks like I already got that one. Okay, we are going to jump over to Slicer and set this thing up. The file is done downloading. Let's load it up. I already had it. It's the same file. Open. And let's view it. It looks, it's too small. We're going to have to embiggen. Let's go. Let's see what 150 looks like. 150% embiggens. Uh, it's got to be bigger than that. Let's go 200%. Wow, that's going to be a monster print. And we are going to definitely need some support structure. It's only got a little bit of the back if we can look here yeah be prone to tipping over if we don't put some support structure on there also how's that trunk gonna work if we look at it from here we can handle all of these angles on the Prusa Mark III but not that one that's just kind of floating out in the middle of nowhere that's part of his trunk, or her, whatever. So let's add, oh. And since it's so big, we can probably speed it up. We don't need that much fill density. Let's take it down to 10%. See what that looks like. That's better. That should speed up the print quite a bit. And now let's add that support material. Since we want to have support material in this area, we have to select everywhere. Elsewise, it will just put it on the build platform as it says. And now you can see, here it is. So there's support material just for the trunk. Unfortunately, it's going to put this here. I have not figured out a way to go in and selectively delete parts of support material that I don't need. If anybody knows how to do that, please let me know, because that is unnecessary and it's just gonna add time to the print. Even the tail we could probably get away without having, but that's yeah, not a lot. Okay, we made some changes, make sure it's sliced correctly, and let's send it over to the printer. Not going to start, going to change out filament. That's a lot of G-code. Come on, you can do it. This may be one of the largest prints that I've done in, in quite a while. Alright, I'm going to set up a time lapse on this so you'll see that next. Well, this is horrible. I uh, ran out of disk space on the Raspberry Pi, so I copied everything over to a USB drive and uh, wrote a script that would copy everything over every 60 seconds. This is not what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to go back to the back right corner and pause, take a picture. That is how Octolapse works. We're going to resolve that, and in the next, all of the next... 3D printing videos will work better. Also have to fix the camera mounting because as you can see it moved a bit. 
Uh, right now it's mostly duct taped together, but we'll fix that. Maybe we'll do a video on it. Good morning, and I say good morning because today is not today anymore. Today is tomorrow because this took nine and a half hours to print. And it looks like it came out just fine. So let's peel this off of here and take a look at her. it this way all right looking pretty good I see no errors on the print itself I wish I could say the same for the time-lapse because after what you just saw if anything I'm actually rendering it right now you're gonna see that something went wrong. I have Octolapse set up on the Octoprint server, but ran out of disk space halfway through, caught it, wrote a little script that would uh, move the files off onto a USB drive every 60 seconds. So I have all of the files. There's like 2000 different files, but Octolapse I don't know what happened with Octolapse, so it's just like some random pictures. It's not set like Octolapse sets it. So whatever time lapse you see, it's not going to be that great. I'm going to get that all sorted out. Now I, I learned from that last night on a big print. Need more disk space. So let's proceed with cleaning up the elephant. This is all coming off pretty easy so far. There's nothing to damage under here, which is good. I mean, there's not little parts that are going to break off while I peel this off. That's always the danger with this. Okay, I have to clean that up a bit. There's these unnecessary parts. Also, today it is Thanksgiving morning. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody. We're gonna have a pretty small deal this year. I like to host Thanksgiving most times. Uh, love to cook, cook a turkey. Ah, the render just finished. I wonder how that turned out. I like to cook a good turkey. I have a good recipe. I've been doing it for years and years and years, and people really dig it every time I make it. So, not going to get to do it this year. Hopefully, we'll do another turkey later on, another time this year, so I get to have that chance. Today, we're going to go to Oakland. Yay, Oakland. Wow, this is pretty tight in there. Might need to clip that out. Can get in there. I was going to have my kid go with us, but he turned it down. A new girlfriend going to go hang out with our family, which is fine. I'm glad for that. But, I wish you would come with me. Alright, let's see what kind of damage we did there. There it is. I mean, still a little bit to clean up, but... Tools away. Is a lesson that I've been trying to teach myself or as long as I can remember. That's a tough one. Even when you're on a workbench like this, just put it back where it goes so you know where it is the next time you reach for it.
So anybody who is doing something like this, if you are cleaning this up or you're working with a sharp tool, every minute that you're working with it, be conscious that you're cutting away from yourself. You can see when I position this thing to cut, I'm holding this and I know which direction I'm pushing. And I know that if I slip out of there, it's not gonna go into my finger. I'm not holding it like this. If I did that and it slipped out, this could go right into my finger. Don't really like it when it, that happens. So I'm always conscious that I'm gonna make sure to put my hands in a place where it is less likely for something to happen because I mean, even if I'm holding it in this position, I'm pushing this way, finger not in the way, uh, you know, something crazy could happen and deflect off here or I could sneeze and do something crazy. But just always remember when you're working with sharp tools and you're applying force in a specific direction that none of your soft, fleshy bits are in the way. Thought I'd share that because I have done it. I have scars all over my hands from when I was a kid doing this stuff. I learned the hard way. Yeah, don't do it. Be conscious all the time. There we have it. We have our elephant. Turned out pretty good. Still got a little, couple of little things I keep discovering in the lighting, but let's see if we can get some good focus here. Not too bad. I'm not super pleased with the top, the way that that turned out. But you're not really gonna look at that part. It's gonna be in a diorama, remember? Let's look at a couple of the other animals for scale. And scale's gonna be tough in this, but here's an orangutan, whoop, stand up. And here's a tiger. Yeah. Close enough for a seven-year-old. All right, so that's it for this round. Don't know how much I'm going to get done today on Thanksgiving. We have to travel, but uh, we'll be back with the next installment soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.